Hey guys, welcome back to the Pulling Curls podcast. Today on episode 63, we are talking about something I ignored for mm, 18 years of my parenting journey. Um, Maybe not that long. I just cleaned with what my mom had. And I think a lot of us do that or we just grab whatever's at the grocery store and we're not always thinking about what's coming into our house. Guilty. Anyone else guilty? Let's untangle it. Welcome to the Pulling Curls Podcast. I'm Hillary, your curly-headed host on the podcast where we untangle everything from pregnancy, parenting, and home routines. I want you to know that there are no right answers for every family, and I find that simplifying my priorities is almost always the answer. It's tangled, just like my hair. Okay, guys, before we get started... Be sure and grab my weekly cleaning printable that's included in the show notes of this episode. It is going to get you on a cleaning schedule, and I think you'll love it. Okay, today's guest is my friend Samantha Radford, and she is the blogger. Actually, she's Dr. Samantha Radford. Luckily, she's not a medical doctor. I just can't take those out when I'm off of work. But she is the mom behind Evidence-Based Mom, and she's a former chemist with a focus in public health. So she got her Ph.D., from Emory. And she was an exposure scientist who focused on maternal child health, which I think is just fascinating. Pretty cool. Samantha has years of research in learning about how chemical exposures affect both unborn babies and children, as well as toxicants and medications, how they are passed through breast milk. So when I met Samantha, I was like, I definitely need to have you on the podcast. It's just not something I thought of for such a long time. Although I remember one time my pregnant friend was cleaning her oven with oven cleaner. And I thought, that's probably not my best plan. But then I thought, you know, I do stupid things too. And this isn't a guilt trip. This is just a let's inform ourselves a little bit more about what we should be bringing into our house. So I want to welcome my friend, Samantha Radford. This episode of the Pulling Curls podcast is sponsored by The Organized Home, the realistic way to manage a home, reduce clutter and clean less. Ever wish you could relax with Netflix rather than worrying about the state of your home or that lost paper you need? No more needing hours to prep for company. Be prepared for any doorbell. Let's simplify organizing so you can enjoy life more. Save 15% with the coupon code UNTANGLED. You can find it at pullingcurls.com in the menu under courses or in this episode's show notes. Hey, Samantha. Welcome to the Pulling Curls podcast. Hey, Hillary. How are you? Oh, man. I'm a little sweaty. We just finished a Just Dance here. Oh, okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So Samantha has all these credentials and I'm excited to talk to her because sometimes I use cleaning projects that maybe don't even clean because I'm so wanting to be natural. So I'm excited to talk to her because I've been like testing a toe out of the water, especially with COVID on some more like serious cleaning products. And I want to get her take on it. So let's talk about first cleaning versus disinfecting. Okay, right. So like you said, cleaning and disinfecting are two different things. Cleaning is probably what we were more interested in pre-COVID. You know, you're just trying to get rid of dust and dirt and grime and whatever. That's cleaning. Disinfecting is trying to actually kill germs, you know, bacteria or viruses. So the nice natural things that we usually like to use, especially, you know, is moms that like we're concerned about our health and we're concerned about our kids' health and all that. We're trying to stay all natural. Those things generally do not work for disinfecting. And at this point, you know, we're it's going to be better for you to be exposed to a little bit of bleach than it is to catch COVID. So that's kind of where we are right now. Yeah. Now, but you don't have to disinfect every time. So No. Gosh, no. So, I mean, it depends on how much you're out and about or how much you have people in too. But, you know, if you're wiping down just like, say, the light switches and the handrails and countertops and stuff once a week or something like that, you know, that could be reasonable. Yeah. And a lot of it depends like, um, you know, if we bring home groceries and we try and sanitize that real quick, or if I've come home from work and laid my work bag, which now lives in the garage, but back in the day, I would bring my work bag and stay it on the table. That would need to be sanitized that area. So right. yeah, your whole, with you being in the medical field, that's a whole nother thing. I'm sure. Yeah. My kids love the naked run from the laundry room to my room. It's a special <laughs> COVID dance I do now. So Is there really chemical-free cleaning? No. (laughs) So everything's made out of chemicals, right? Like water is a chemical. You know, the stuff that's in plants, whether or not they're organic, 
those are chemicals. Like we are made of chemicals. That's what makes up the entire universe. So it bugs me when I see people advertising chemical free products or asking about, you know, where they can find a chemical free cleaner because that's just not a thing. All the, oh, now we're bringing back my chemistry in college and I'm starting to get a little nauseated. But yes, everything's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. Those are your big ones. Those are the big ones. Yes. (laughs) But let's talk more natural. What would you say the difference between like what's a natural cleaning product? So generally, I mean, natural stuff is something that comes from the environment. So, And natural isn't always the same thing as safe, right? For example, people are really big into using essential oils, which I have no problems with essential oils. Don't jump on me for that. But if you use the wrong ones in the wrong context, you know, they could cause real problems. So just because those are natural doesn't mean that they're safe for everything. For that matter, just because something is synthetic or man-made doesn't automatically make it dangerous. But generally speaking, something that's more natural tends to be safer. And so those basics like vinegar and baking soda, that kind of stuff. But you add vinegar and baking soda, that's not a friend. You don't want to get that on. No, it's fine. That just <laughs> makes busy. That's just carbon dioxide bubbles that come off. And then you basically have salt water at the end that's useless. So a lot of times I'll see people talking about mixing baking soda and vinegar to make a cleaner. I'm like, but why? You just made salt water. So I put it down my drain. Does it do your drain? It might. So when you put it down there, when they're mixed and those bubbles are being created, that's just carbon dioxide. That's the stuff that we breathe out. And like those little bubbles might knock some gunk loose. Mm. But that's kind of the extent of what it really does down the drain. Well, son of a gun. Now I'm now it's <laughs> useless. All right. So what are some of your favorite things to clean with at your house? I mean, honestly, my all-purpose cleaner, again, we're talking cleaning, not disinfecting. But my my general go-to cleaner is just I'll take like a spray bottle and I'll mix it half water, half vinegar. And I might put a drop or two of Dawn detergent into that. And I use that for wiping down the counters, for you know wiping the inside of the microwave, for doing mirrors and glass. So that's kind of my favorite thing. Yeah, we use that same thing too. A lot of times I put in a little bit of essential oils to maybe counteract all the vinegarness. Yeah. I don't know if it counteracts, but it's a nice smell at least. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and I am of the essential oil camp somewhat. So I do add the like uh, On Guard or whatever brand you're using, the antimicrobial type oil. Yeah. Yeah. My only thing about like the other thing with essential oils. If you're pregnant or breastfeeding, there's certain ones that could be hazardous. For example, clary sage, you know, people say you're great for like women's health. It could actually cause um, premature labor. So you definitely want to stay away from it, for example, when you're pregnant. Peppermint, I believe, or sage can mess with your milk supply. So those are things you'd want to be avoiding when you were breastfeeding. And then there are other ones we're concerned that they might have estrogenic effects. So basically mimic estrogen in the body. So lavender, you know, lavender, everyone talks about as being just a really like all purpose, you know, um, safer oil. And it might be, but it might be that if you expose younger children to lavender too much, that it can have, have these kind of estrogen mimicking chemicals that can affect, you know, like reproductive systems and puberty and all that, which is something we don't want to do. I did not know that. Although I hate the smell of lavender. So yeah, it's a weird smell. It's not my favorite. I don't like lavender soap and stuff, but yeah. Interesting. Yes. I do know that a lot of the major essential oil companies do have like, is it okay to be around breastfeeding or all that types of stuff? So if you're using a brand, you might want to check that out, peeps. Yeah. Okay. So what do you use for just what? I said, I just realized that wasn't your question. I went off. No, I don't mind. I thought it was good. Okay. What do you use for disinfecting? Do you use bleach? I do. So if I were pregnant, I would try to make sure that somebody else was doing it for me. But yeah, I use bleach. Now, again, ideally, it would be great if we didn't have to use it because chronic exposure. So if you were around bleach like all the time, you know, if you maybe you did cleaning like you were a janitor or something like that, it could eventually cause problems like respiratory effects. Um, It's been linked to asthma and that kind of thing. But if you're just using it every once in a while to wipe stuff down, it'll be fine. You do have to take precautions when you use bleach. That's very important. So number one rule with bleach is don't ever, 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 ever 
mix it with anything but water because it can put off a lot of really nasty gases, including chlorine gas, lots of things that could either put you in the hospital or even potentially kill you. Uh, But as long as you only mix it with water, it should be fine. The other things to keep in mind with bleach is... If you do choose to delete it, like we were talking about keeping a spray bottle of vinegar and water, you can't really do that with bleach because once you dilute it, that changes the pH and that makes it um, expire faster. Same kind of thing. You'll just end up with salt water basically. So it's going to lose its effectiveness if you try to store it when it's diluted. And oh, there's... What do they do for all those like Clorox sprays at the grocery store? Do Are those like specially diluted or do they just... I don't know. It might have a buffer in there or something to... I don't know offhand. Interesting. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's something else about safety. Oh, make sure, make sure that you keep things well ventilated too. So if you can, you know, if you're in a bathroom, for example, turn on the fan in there. You might want to open some windows or something. Just try to avoid um, to avoid breathing it. Yeah, because you definitely are going to wear your mask right now. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could. I wouldn't though, personally. Okay, so you mentioned pregnant women shouldn't be using a lot of bleach. Any other tasks, other like things pregnant women shouldn't be doing? Um, I mean, I'm all for, let's make a whole list of things pregnant women shouldn't have to do around the house, right? Let's do, yeah. I mean, the more stuff <laughs> you can avoid just out of this year, like, you can't breathe and you're exhausted thing. (laughs) That's great. But yeah, I mean, just try, try to kind of stick towards that, you know, vinegar and baking soda kind of cleaning while you're pregnant if possible. If there's someone around like a family member or your spouse or an older kid who can do cleaning for you or disinfecting for you, that would be super, you know. Yeah. And I have to say the vinegar and a drop of dish soap and water really, it does it. Yeah, it does. Because I was definitely like, oh, I love my 409. My mom always 409 when we were growing up. And then I was like, oh, I'd like to save some money. And I get my vinegar at Costco. So it's super cheap or cheap. And it really does a good job. So if you guys are, are out there saying, oh, that probably won't work. Yeah, it does. You know what else worked that I found like a month or two ago? I, so I've always wondered, you know, when you have greasy stuff on a cast iron skillet, I've wondered how to handle that because you're not really supposed to put dish detergent on it because you don't want to mess with your um, with the seasoning. That's what it's called. But if you'll use some coarse salt, like if you have like a box of salt and pour that in there and scrub with it, that actually gets stuff off of your cast iron. Yeah, we actually do. My husband's a big cast iron cooker, so he loves to do that. We also have a piece of chain mail we use to scrub ours with. Okay. Yeah. That works. It's amazing what just some elbow grease will do, um, you know, which you don't have a lot of elbow grease when you're pregnant. You've used all of your will to... (laughs) to grow a human. All right. What about with a baby? Is there any special... You mentioned essential oils. Watch around little ones. Right. Yeah. I would avoid essential oils pretty much at all when they're little for at least six months, maybe a year. But same sort of, you know, same kind of cleaning that we were talking about when you're pregnant. Kind of stick with that vinegar, baking soda, Dawn dish soap type thing. Yeah. It should be fine. And honestly, I would try and clean when they're not attached to you. Which it yeah. can be difficult, but whoever's not, maybe that's a way to get dad to hold the baby. You then clean, you know, what a, what a joy that is. While you hold the baby. Yeah. That, that could also work. Yeah. Whichever break you want, break from the baby. Yeah. So yeah. I do see every once in a while people like with a baby, like with their 409. And I'm like, oh, that's probably not your best move, but <laughs> you'll probably make worse ones too. So yeah. Any other tips for moms and cleaning products? No, yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much covers everything. If you're concerned, going back to the disinfecting, if you're concerned about that, say for some reason you can't find bleach or something, um, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, has a page specifically dedicated to a bunch of different products that are registered to kill COVID-19 virus. So you can reference that. And if you're worried about, well, which one of those are safe for us, then the Environmental Working Group has a list of disinfectants that they consider safe. So I cross-linked, like I looked at both of those things and saw, well, what's in both categories? And it looks like seventh generation cleaners actually are going to be seventh generation disinfectants that those are actually a good choice if you can find those. So that's like the ideal. But generally speaking, it's like you can't find that right now because everything's crazy. So 
don't like feel guilty if you use bleach. Like you're not killing your family. It'll be fine. Yeah. So I think the keys would probably be wear gloves, right? That might protect your skin more than anything else. And ventilation, put on, open a window if you don't live in Phoenix right now, or, you know, put on a fan. Never ever. Or just make sure that the the room's real open. Yes. And never, ever, ever mix bleach with anything ever. 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 Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm very purposely saying that many nevers and ever. <laughs> what about what about disinfectant wipes? Do they... Half of me feels like they probably don't even work. <laughs> that's the other... That's the other, other thing. Thank you. So with bleach, for example... Oh, peroxide's okay. You could use hydrogen peroxide if you don't have bleach. To disinfect, you mean, right? To disinfect specifically, yes. So with both of those, you really ought to let them sit on the surface for like 10 minutes before you wipe it off. So yeah, I'm not real sure how effective the wipes are because if you're supposed to let something sit for 10 minutes, I don't, that's not really what wipes do. Well, I mean, it's damp, but right. yeah. My kids have learned a lot about dwell time for me lately because they'd like to just spray the disinfectant on and then wipe it right off. And I'm like, no, you spray it on, then you wash your hands, and then you come back after you've sprayed everything and wash your hands. <laughs> right. But yeah, so dwell time, in case you guys don't know, it takes a certain amount of time for whatever the disinfectant is, bleach, alcohol, whatever, to penetrate the, the outside of the virus and kill it. So that's what dwell time is. It's, it's that amount of time that the soldiers in your disinfectant take to work. So yes, yeah. And most disinfectants should have a dwell time. When people say that there is no dwell time, I kind of look askance at them. Yeah. Once again, that's another thing on that page that the EPA has. It tells you how long it takes. And most things are like eight to 10 minutes. So. Okay. We probably haven't waited. Well, I think it would all evaporate at our house at this point in Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's actually a good point. Yeah. So you can just spray it on. And if you can leave it, set a timer for 10 minutes and then come back and get any little puddles. I think that'd probably be your best bet if it was warm in your house. So, all right. Thanks so much for coming on, Samantha. You guys, I'm, I'm going to link her course in the profile if you are interested in keeping your house as safe as possible, which I think is such a good idea. I spent probably 18 years of my motherhood life pretty much ignoring what chemicals we brought into our house because I was overwhelmed, but it probably wasn't my best choice. So uh, I think her course is awesome. I will link it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to make it to where you could find everything in one place with information from people, someone who, you know, kind of has the expertise to actually talk about that instead of just being scared, like you said, and trying to hide from it. Yeah. I have to say when you said you can cross-reference the two lists, uh, my eyes fogged over and I was like, well, somebody must have done that. And it's you. (laughs) You've done it. So check out her course, you guys. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming on. Okay, guys. Like I said in the beginning, I do hope that you didn't take this as like a guilt trip. Like, oh my gosh, I mixed bleach with Fabuloso, which I have done. So... I'm still alive. But just something to think about going forward. What chemicals we're bringing into our home? Again, everything's a chemical. If they're safe, if we could find a better alternative that is more safe, huzzah to that, right? And also cleaning and disinfecting. I think people got a little bit crazy during COVID and we're going to have to rein it in a little bit. It's not so important to disinfect. Again, something I didn't mention in the episode, but it is a real soapbox of mine. You don't have to wash with antimicrobial soap. You know, the action of rubbing your hands together with a soap is antimicrobial in its own. So you don't need, what is it, tricyclocans or something that are in antibacterial soap to, you know, get in your body. Same thing with cleaning. If something that is safer can do just as good of a job, let's use it, right? Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope we help smooth out a few of the snarls in your life. We drop an episode every Monday and we always appreciate it when you guys share and review. Until next time, we hope you have a tangle-free day. (laughs) 